is Adam from Vassar College? Is Adam? Oh, there he is. All right. So this was Adam's question. He said, given the liberal political order bends towards automation of individuals, e.g. automation and urbanization, how can meaningful community be assured? Well, you build that for yourself in part. You know, I mean, um, Adam, yes. get a girlfriend. <laughs> well, I mean, pe people aren't doing that. You know, that, that's falling by the wayside, right? And, and so, and it, it's because it's trouble, you know, to, <laughs> well, it is trouble. Life is trouble, and it's trouble to establish a permanent relationship, you know. I mean, we've told young people for far too long that, well, they should be happy in their relationships, let's say, and it's like, that's a week. It's, well, it is. God, most of you are married. It's like, to be married for 40 years, that's, that's not a triumph of happiness. It's a, tri it's, a, it's a triumph of character. It's a triumph of negotiation, right? It's a, it's, it's a triumph of will to do that. And, 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 and that should be celebrated, but it should, it should also be pointed out that no matter who you find, like, they're no better than you, and that's not so good. So there's, <laughs> so there's going to be problems. And so, but that shouldn't stop you. It's like, find someone, you know? You're going to have, if you're lucky, you're going to have the opportunity to sort of sift through about five people in your life. That's about it. Then you're going to have to stake yourself on one of those people. And it's a, and well, it's, it's, a, it's a hell of a risk, but... <laughs> But with any luck, it'll make you a better person. That, 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 that wrestling. You know, one of the things I learned, I did a series of biblical lectures in 2017, which have turned out to be crazily popular of all the insane things to be. And I was supposed to ask you, why do you think yes, that is? Yes, yes. Well, it, I learned, one of the things I learned in, 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 in those lectures and should have known before was that the word Israel, so the chosen people of God, the people of Israel, are those who wrestle with God. And that's such an interesting idea. You know, it's, it's a fascinating idea because it, it indicates at least, even, even in our deepest religious text, that there's, some, there's something about existential conflict and engaging in that that's actually part of the moral substructure of life. That, 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 that simple belief, let's say, whatever that might mean in a deity, isn't sufficient. Is that there's an active engagement with, with, with the infinite. And, then, and, it's, and it's a battle in some sense. And, and I think that's, that's the proper way to conceptualize it. I think it's the proper way to conceptualize a relationship. It's, it's a battle. It's a battle towards a positive end. It's a battle towards the transformation of both of you into more than you could have otherwise been. So you need that. And you need your friends. And, and, and you need to develop a network of friendship. And you need to put your family together and to act responsibly towards them. And then you need to move out from that into the broader community. And that's on you. And that's how you foster it. You, 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 you make it a part of the ideal that you're pursuing. And then you, you realize that that's, that's up to you to do. And maybe then you realize that you can do it as well if you're willing to make the right sacrifices which really usually means burning off a fair bit of, of dead wood, and that's not something that people are particularly excited about doing, and no wonder. <laughs> Our time has been too short. Let, we I have time for just one more final okay. question, I'm told. What have I not asked you about? And, and thinking of our theme of, of standing up against socialism, what have I not asked you about? What have other interviewers not asked you about that would be beneficial for us all to know as we want to take well, that you, on? Well, you, you asked a little bit about these biblical lectures, you know, and what was interesting was I rented a theater in Toronto. I rented it 15 times, and, and it was a theater for about 500, and it sold out every time, and I le lectured about Genesis, which... And it was mostly young men who came. They weren't all young, but they were mostly men, which was very surprising because, like, that's just not what happens. And um, what the reason that the 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 lectures worked and 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 was because I I put together something that I don't think 
liberals or conservatives have done a good job of putting together. The liberals are more on the happiness and freedom end of things, and the conservatives are more on the duty end of things. And those are both, those both have their place. But I've been attempting to develop an argument that's centered on meaning. And I do believe, and I believe that our, our most central religious symbols, like the, the symbol of the cross itself, for example, the bearing of the cross, is a, an embodiment or a symbolic representation of this idea, is that you, you have to have a meaning in life that sustains you. Life is a serious business. You're all in. It's a fatal business, right? Everyone's in it up to their neck. And it's, it's dreadful in some sense, in the classic sense. And you need a meaning that can sustain you through that. And that's to be found in responsibility. And that's something that we have not communicated I don't think well to ourselves, but we certainly haven't communicated it to young people. It's like, well, you're lost. There's reasons that you could be lost, and they're real. You know, God only knows what terrible things happen to you in your life. It's like, how are you going to get out of that? Well, not by pursuing impulsive happiness. That is not going to work. Not by thinking in the short term. Not by thinking in a narrowly selfish manner either, but by taking on the heaviest load of responsibility that you can conceptualize and bear. That will do it. It'll do it for you. It'll give you a reason to wake up in the morning. It'll give you a, a bomb for your conscience when you wake up at night and ask yourself what you're doing with your life. It'll make you a credit to yourself and to your family, and it'll make you a boon to your community. And more than that, there's more than that, you know, it's said in, the, in Genesis that every person is made in the image of God. And there's an idea in Genesis that God is that which confronts the chaos of potential with truth and courage. That's the logos. And if we're made in the image of God, that's us. That's what we do is we confront the potential of chaos, the future, the unformed future. We confront that consciously and we... We decide with every ethical choice we make what kind of world we're going to bring into being. We transform that potential into actuality. And we do that as a consequence of our ethical decisions. And so it's not only a matter of putting yourself together and putting your family together, and putting your community together. It's a matter of bringing the world in its proper shape into being. And I truly believe that that's the case. And I believe that we all believe that. Like, we hold ourselves responsible. You know that if you've made a mistake with your family, you know, because you were selfish or narrow-minded or blind in some manner, that you regard yourself as culpable. You could have done otherwise. And now you've brought something into the world that should not be there. And it's on you. We, we, we hold ourselves responsible in that manner. And so what that indicates to me is that in a deep sense, we believe that we are the agents that transform the potential of being into reality. And, and that is a divine, if anything, is, links us with divinity. It's our capability to transform what is not yet into what is. And... and the other thing that happens, and I'll stop with this in Genesis, and this is so interesting, it's so fascinating, is that as God conducts himself through this enterprise of the transformation of potential into actuality, he stops repeatedly and says, and it was good. And, 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 that, and that's a mystery. Is it, why is it good? And the answer is something like, well, if what if you conduct yourself with the courage that enables you to accept your vulnerability, which is no trivial matter, and if you're truthful, then what you bring out of potential is what's good. And that sets the world right. And that's up to us. And to me, that's the great, that's the great story of, of the West. That's why we regard ourselves as sovereign individuals of value, is that's what we are. And we need to know that, to take ourselves seriously and to act properly in the world. And so, and that's what I said in the biblical lectures in many hours. And 
That's what's made them popular because people, in, at, at, at the level of the soul, I would say, people know these things to be true. So, Ladies and gentlemen, please help me thank Jordan Peterson.